some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we join Judge Tammy Hayward as she uh, destroys, absolutely annihilates a sovereign citizen in her courtroom. So let's go ahead and grab some popcorn and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, Mr. Resto. Um, so, Mr. Resto, you have two cases. You have um, count I'm case sorry. number. You, you hear me? Yes, okay. I hear you. So you're before the court on 2019-CR-04954 for driving on a suspended or revoked license, no license, Failure to display license uh, for your, or failure to have license on person. I'm not sure it cuts off and no tag or expired or invalid tag. So that's on the first case on the case from 2020 03114. You have a suspended or revoked license. Definitely sounds like a uh, average sovereign citizen right there. I mean, just racking up the charges. You're represented by Lister and Holt on one of the cases, but not on the other. Did you want Lister and Holt to represent you, or did you want to represent yourself? Uh, I, I represent myself. On both cases? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a quick question as far as the uh, locker term when it comes to your uh, driver's license. Okay. Um, okay, you're only allowed to have one driver's license, and I right. have I have an Alabama driver's license, so when I get pulled over, I actually showed them my Alabama driver's license and it's current. It's the most current. And so they make a determination if they should go off the Georgia driver's license or the Alabama driver's license. And when I present the Alabama driver's license, they let me go because my Alabama license is valid. And you're only allowed to have one. And I had Alabama license. Uh -huh. So my I believe Georgia this sounds like a not guilty. Are you sure you want to represent yourself in this matter? Because you're coming out of the gate fairly weak. All you have to do here is say guilty or not guilty or no contest because this is the arraignment. This isn't the trial. That comes later, you dummy. Okay, so Mr. Resto, what Mr. Taylor is saying is I, you, this is something that you could prove at trial. If you um, present that information at trial, then um, that means you want to go to trial instead of taking a plea. I don't know what the recommendation is. And I don't well, know. The, the, the recommendation was um, I think I was I've been dealing with this case for an awful long time now. So yeah. I don't really want to go to trial. I just want to get it behind me. But I think that the recommendation I remember the recommendation quite clear. Well, they offered me 40 hours of community service. Is that still on the table? <laughs> okay, no, Mr. Resto, it's more than that. So let me explain why I know it's more than that. So the basic uh, fines and fees for driving on a suspended license is the first time in five years, if you get one, then you are you can enter a NOLO plea if you have a NOLO plea eligible to you. And then the fine is $500. But if you get a second one, the fine goes to $1,000. A third one, the fine goes to $1,500 and 10 days mandatory jail time. You have a second one, which means that you might be able to enter a NOLO to the first one, but then the second one is outstanding. So when you took a plea to the second one, that would definitely suspend your license. So that that's what's on the table. Okay. And, it, and the fines are hefty. So you would get a plea on the first one, and that's a $500 fine, which is $737.50. But the next one is going to be 1000 in addition to that, and that's $1,420. So we're looking at almost two, $2,000, almost $2,200. Uh, Your Honor, uh, is Mr. Resto represented on the particular case that we're referring to? Well, uh, I don't know. address him directly. If he's so, represented, because this is a serious matter. I get you. So that's why I'm saying, Mr. Resto, you have representation. I can allow you to be represented by on both cases, and they can help you work this out. But understand well, that well, I was already I was already represented by a listener and Holt, and we kind of been going back and forth with the uh, district attorney's office for a while, and you know they've been 
giving me recommendations and, you know, I, I still didn't take it, but uh, they've been giving me rep- recommendations. I don't know what's changed, but um, it okay. definitely wasn't $2,000. Um, talk to your attorney and let them tell you what the recommendation they have on the table. OK, because the recommendation, if you're represented, even if you're only represented on one case, the rec is probably going to come to your attorney. OK, now, does the if I enter like an oral motion of dismissal based on constitutional grounds, uh, are you standing on your constitutional oath? OK, I, the, I'm, the, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, boy, here we go. We got a professional YouTube law scholar questioning someone who went to an actual law school to study the law and the Constitution questioning her. Not exactly a bright idea, you jackwagon. So I have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution and to make sure that I treat people um, as the law would direct me to do so. So, Well, I I asked this question uh, previously when I was in your courtroom one day in regards to the uh, right to travel under the 14th Amendment, stating that citizens uh, do not need a permit to travel with a horse-drawn carriage, wagon, or automobile without interference by police, and I was on a public highway, actually, when I got pulled over. Uh, no, dude. You are a complete dumbass, because the 14th Amendment doesn't say that. It is all about due process, well, mostly about due process within the 14th Amendment. Go out and get a book and actually study this thing without looking into any soft hard literature. Okay, so that that's not actually in the Constitution? And so I don't the right to travel, to travel. And the 14th Amendment was ratified. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. I just uh, wanted to point out to the court that automobiles hadn't been invented when the 14th Amendment was ratified. That yeah, may it, said, it, said auto, it said automobile, horse, drawn wagon, or carriage. Okay. So, uh, so uh, an, uh, an automobile <laughs> is not necessarily a car, but it's a household good. It's, it's just a form of transportation. It doesn't matter if it's an automobile, horse, drawn wagon, or a carriage because it's still a form of transportation and uh, citizens have the right to travel without interference by police. So I don't even know how the police are even allowed to interfere with travel when I'm not using my vehicle for commerce. Uh, Your Honor, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a totally private household good. Okay, so Mr. Resto, if somebody drove 100 miles an hour into the back of your vehicle um, and killed your uh, a family member, would you want the police to interfere? Uh, that's that's a uh, murder. I mean, that's that's if someone got killed. But they're traveling. You can't interfere with somebody traveling. No, I mean you 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 can't. Uh, uh, it's stating that a police just can't interfere. With your traveling, like pulling you over for a, a, a traffic violation or, you know, a, a tag. It, it, but you want not, them to interfere if now, somebody. Now if you murder somebody because. Well, sovereign, it's, OK, sovereign. say you don't mar- murder them. Say you just hurt them. Say you just damaged the vehicle. You don't want the police to interfere. No, no, no. That, because that that's when it almost become like an accident or a crime or whatnot. So the police can. That's not really an interference. An interference with your traveling. Not an interference when two citizens engaged in an accident it's interfering with you just traveling okay so you want the police officers to do their job when it suits you but uh but to leave you alone when it inconveniences you is that what i'm hearing here uh no it doesn't exactly work that way dude the police don't work on your whims they work by enforcing the law. And if they catch you doing a dumb on the highway, like having no plates or license or anything like that, you're a danger to everybody else through sheer lack of insurance, which basically means if you have no coverage, well, who's going to protect you in that scenario? Because you got to pay the price for it. Now, police officers, as far as public servants, they have a duty to serve to the people. So if a car accident occurs, then, of course, public servants, as far as ambulance, as far as firemen, they will come to the scene just as a service. 
But for you to just interfere in my traveling is actually a violation of the Constitution. Well, sir, the Constitution and the and the cases that have come out of the constitutional jurisprudence allow cities and states and municipal organizations to regulate travel for the benefit of the citizens. So they can put reasonable re regulations on travel, meaning they can have you can have a license. They can grant you the privilege of having a license to drive. They can regulate how your license is take is um, seen. If you are uh, don't have a license or if your license is suspended, they can intervene to take your license away or your privilege to drive away. You can, it is a crime. You can be convicted of not driving under a pri proper license. So the government is allowed to intervene in a lot of ways with people traveling. So I'm not sure where this information comes from, but there's a lot of stuff on the internet about traveling and the 14th Amendment and horse and buggies and even maritime law. But I mean, a, a, a automobile, a automobile was actually created before a driver's license was ever created. So people okay. was actually operating their case pamphlets where people was actually operating vehicles before a driver's license ever became. Well, yeah, the automobile existed before driver's licenses. You're a genius, aren't you? But you know what? They also found out that not everybody can operate or properly operate a uh, rather large piece of equipment like that without sufficient training and regulation without killing anybody. I mean, let me give you an example. If a uh, person was mentally unstable or unbalanced and incapable of operating one of these machines, suddenly decided to, well, operate one on the open road and gets pulled over by a police officer and there were no such things as licenses, but the officer didn't notice that this guy had a mental condition and uh, ended up letting him go. Now, what would happen afterwards if this guy got into a collision with somebody else and ended up causing havoc in the streets. Now, in your little world, the uh, police officer would have let the guy go because, you know what, nobody needs a driver's license, so he's free to go. But in our world, the officer would have seen that this guy had no driver's license seen he was a basket case, and would have called for backup to take care of the issue. And nobody would have gotten hurt in that scenario. But in the scenario I presented earlier, people would have gotten hurt or worse because, you know what, the officers have no power, and people aren't tested to see if they're competent enough to drive or not. That's actually... Yeah, yeah, you guys are actually a conflict of interest, actually, as far as you being in cahoots with the DMV. That's a totally separate entity. Okay. And for some so, reason, Mr. Resto, do you want to uh, resolve the case because it's not? I, I want to resolve the case. Forty hours. I, I, dis I disagree with the with the with the fine amount because it changed. I would pay. A, I, I would make an offer like I can do a thousand dollars, maybe twelve month probation. M Mr. But two thousand dollars that's excessive. Mr. Resto, we're not negotiating. Those are statutory fines, meaning they're written into the law. I can't even change them. Can, can I make a counter offer to the state and say it's a thousand dollars? Is that can I be because no, I did do sir. time in jail? If the state would see that, well, and count. that's why I'm saying that you may want to speak with an attorney because certain things that they can negotiate, I can't change the statute, I can't change what's written in it, but they can negotiate. And if the solicitor wants to give you credit for time in jail in lieu of the fine. Those are things that they can do that I can't do. Yeah, yeah. So, so I will ask to the uh, district attorney, uh, knowing that I, I I did serve some days in jail. Can you guys okay. lower the fine and I just go ahead and end this so case right now? I can I can do a thousand. I got a thousand dollars right now. Okay, okay. So you could pull out a thousand dollars for uh, that fine, but you're unwilling to pay the licensing fee, which is uh, significantly cheaper to maintain over a period of years, and you are a complete moron, but then again, you are a sovereign citizen, so therefore, you are naturally a complete moron. Mr. 
Mr. Uh, Resto. So that's a conversation that you need to have with them directly without me being present, number one. Number two, the reason I keep saying you might want to go through your attorney is because they can explain to you what is already on the table and how that may or may not change, okay? What, what, what What's on the table now? Ma'am? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I would rather you have that conversation in a breakout room with your with the attorney who's assigned to your case and with the state as opposed to here in the main room. One, because I have other cases that need to be addressed. And two, because okay. that's not information I need to hear. OK, is it is it anything I can do to get this case resolved now? Because it's been lingering. All I'm telling you what to do, but years. you're not listening, Mr. Resta. Mr. Resto, I mean, today, I'm, like I want to resolve this today. I get that you want to resolve it today. And I'm telling you what to do, but you're not listening to me. I said you can go into a breakout room with your attorney and the attorney and you can discuss what's already on the table. And then if your attorney wishes to speak with the state to clarify anything, they can do that, too. But you're not going to get it resolved by going back and forth with me because there's okay. stuff I cannot do. OK. Um. Just tell the state that I'll take their recommendation. I'll just pay the two thousand. If they can give me twelve months to pay it off, and okay, if but, I can, and if I sir, pay it off early, if my probation can be terminated, that would be great. And this is exactly one of the reasons why you should not be defending yourself at all in any trial because you don't have the ability to listen because the judge has been advising you this whole time. Now, uh, at this point, the judge sends everybody into a different room to discuss this matter. But the Savtar decides to uh, leave the room for some reason. And uh, we're about to get that explanation as to why he possibly did that. Sorry, I was discussing with Mr. Resto, and I understand something changed about his bond. Okay. Uh, he has bonds with two bondsmen. I don't, I mean, I don't know of anything. Does he have, did he, did somebody come off a bond? Uh, Your Honor, maybe I can uh, address that question. Okay. Mr. Bresco, uh, our office filed a motion to revoke bond, and that motion uh, was granted to Royal Nisi, uh, and it was calendared. Uh, that motion didn't happen because of the pandemic. It was, I believe, scheduled to happen in uh, 2021, maybe February, but somewhere uh, about that time. Uh, I informed Mr. Kamani to inform his client that depending on the uh, outcome of today's uh, arraignment, uh, the state proceed intends to move forward on that bond revocation. Your Honor, may I make a request on that matter? Sure, Mr. Taylor. I'd request that the defendant uh, show in person for not uh, for him. Uh, Zoom court is uh, a remote appearance is not sufficient. OK, he has a hard time showing up for Zoom calls. Uh, maybe he believes he's above the law. I mean, that's how these soft hearts usually work, isn't it? Oh, well, it's my understanding that you and Mr. Castaneda have parted ways with respect to your case. Uh. Yeah. Did he file a motion to withdraw? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did you want to go forward without an attorney representing yourself? Um, yeah, it seems like the attorney that the state appoints me, they they have a very hard time of like listening to their clients, like what they have to say. Like I had a conversation with him for like maybe five minutes and, you know, it was very like wanted to do what he wanted to do. He didn't want to hear what I had. Oh, gee, let me guess. You decided that you knew more than the man who actually went to law school, put in many, many hours of study, and actually went to court case after court case, studying them, observing them, learning his craft over the years, and yet you think you know more than he does when you've only uh, watched a few YouTube videos uh, yeah, I can understand why he left you on the side of the road, dude. Well, he, you know, he was just telling me, uh, like I was raising concerns about uh, the state came off of my bond, and I was trying to figure out why they came off my bond when I showed up for court. I gave him no reason to come off my bond, and he hey, said, So, when you say come off your bond, 
the bonding company has to do that, not the state. So I'm not sure. Like, well, they what filed happened. a mo. They filed a motion to, to come off our bond. That's what he stated. Okay, is that free at last or uh, Atlanta Clayton bonding? No, not not free at last. Um, it so was. I have that you. He, st he stated. He stated. He stated that the state filed a motion with your court, stating that they wanted to come off my bond to where, basically, I would have warrant on me. Okay, um, Miss uh, John Va, do you have any outstanding bench warrants for Mr. Resto? I don't recall signing any, but um, I may have. Did the state file any motions in regards no. to that? Uh, no. Why are you so focused on your bonds? Have you got something going on? Someplace you want to go? Maybe you want to get out of Dodge? Okay, I did, um, so just a moment, uh, Your Honor, I didn't know that he was back. I'd already given the file to my assistant. Um, she said she had just sent off the bench warrant to you as well, I think. So, um, so I didn't think. Okay. All right, so yeah, Mr. Resto, you're here, so I haven't signed anything yet. Okay. Uh, does the state have any intentions on trying to come off my bond? No. So, sir, they don't come off your bond unless you fail to appear. My understanding is you had a medical excuse for being late today. So you contacted yeah, I'm actually, Val. I'm actually still at the hospital. I just had a minor surgery. Okay. So Ms. Val has allowed you uh, to come on to the call today because she um, knew that you had a medical issue. So we can deal with your case today or we can um, give you a continuance until December 6th, but nobody's coming off the bond and the bench warrant will not be signed. Okay, um, I, I want to handle this today. It's kind of been lingering over my head for some years now. I'm really tired of it. And, okay. um, but I hear that the state is trying to like put, give me like 10 days in jail and that would like absolutely ruin my business. My okay, life, so I have a two-year-old son, I'm a single father. If you've got all that at stake, dude, why are you wasting your time on this soft, hard nonsense? Just get a driver's license. Yeah, but see, Judge, in my situation is, um, okay, I, I got the documentation from the from the uh, Alabama uh, uh, vehicle, motor vehicle department. See, okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually an Alabama citizen, Hold and on, I was Mr. driving. Resto. Hold on. Let me put you in a breakout room with me and the state so we can hear what you're saying, but we're not putting it all out there in case you want to make a different decision. OK. OK, well, I, I have no absolute reason to lie. And I really believe no, that, no, um, it's not. It's not. That, sir. This is what I would do if you had an attorney who was representing you. OK, so this is called a pre. Yeah, but I, I, I just honestly believe that we're just being truthful. There's really no need for attorneys when you're just being honest about your situation. Well, at this point, they rescheduled the hearing and surprise, surprise, surprise. Well, nobody's surprised, really. He didn't show up. Next is um, Mr. Resto. Mr. Uh, Castaneda um, was fired by Mr. Resto, so he's no longer counsel of record. Mr. Resto is wanted um and there is no um surety on that does the state have an um have it there's no surety order on that does the state have a request in the resto case uh mr resto yes uh state would uh definitely request a rule absolute on that matter okay on both cases a rule absolute will be granted thank you your honor <laughs> okay this soft tire decided to become a fugitive from the law uh, this all could have been avoided if you had just decided to pay that little bit of money and get yourself a driver's license. But no, you decided to act like a complete idiot, and now you decide to become a fugitive. You're just not too good at making decisions, are you? Well, at any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.